All right, now you've, that you've created an STL file, we're going to bring that into a software called MakerWare. And the MakerWare is actually going to do what's called slice the program and then create the pathway to run on the prototyper. So I saved my STL on my desktop, so we'll go there so you can see what it's going to look like. Let me put this. You're going to see this in just a second. Um, saving. Okay, so here's my STL file right here. It's a, I called it loopfob.stl. And if I go to open it, it's going to automatically open with MakerWare. Uh, but let's pretend like we didn't know that. If I would go in here to all programs, most of the machines should have MakerWare on them. So if you click on it and then go to MakerWare, it's going to open up uh, the actual program. Okay, this is basically a work envelope like our wrapper prototyper. I'm going to go to Add. Okay, and you'll go find your STL file. For me, mine's on my desktop, so I'll just go find it. Here it is, loop fob STL, and it brings it right in. Okay, and so I can orbit around and look at it. Uh, but what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to click on move, and it, you kind of have to click it twice. And if nothing shows up in here, that means I didn't select my object. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to click it, so now it's highlighted, and go back to move. I'm going to tell it to go to the center of the screen and make sure it's on the platform. So those are both good. Then I'm going to go to turn, and I can rotate it around if I want. It really doesn't matter, but I might, I might rotate it like that. I don't. I could rotate it the other ways, but honestly, the way it was was the best. But I'm going to make sure that I say live flat. So I know it's lying flat on this platform. Then I'm going to go to scale. If I did this to full scale, it would probably take over an hour to do. So we're going to scale this down to 50%. So it's going to be half the size of what you actually designed. Um, and if you hit enter, it'll cut it down. Everything goes 50%. And then I can now close this. And what I'm going to do at this point is say make. And this is how we set up what it's actually going to make. Uh, raft and or supports may be selected or may not be selected. I highly recommend you use a raft and it'll build it under. It makes it easier to remove without damaging your material. And also use supports because if you look, this loop is hovering in the middle of air. Without supports, it won't actually happen. So we're going to say, yeah, use supports if you need to. We're going to go ahead and leave it on standard size or standard speed. But we want to do preview before printing. That's going to give us a time for how long it's going to print. Now I can say, oh, and if you don't have these options down here, it's, it's under advanced options. Make sure you click that and then it'll pop up. So make sure you click preview before printing. When you hit export, what it's doing now is called slicing. And it's basically turning that object into a bunch of different slices. And this one, it turned into 99 layers. And if I pull this down, you'll actually see how the layers are built up. It starts at the bottom with that platform and then builds up all the way and you'll see some of the supports that were put in under here to make this loop so that it, and they're made to be breakaway and it's going to take 20 minutes to print that sounds good and then so we're going to hit export and it creates what's called an x3g file this is for sd cards so back on the, mi the machine you'll have an sd card and you'll have an sd card reader sd card reader plugs in with a usb to the actual rapid prototyping machine. So you need to go get this out of the machine. Go get the SD card reader out of the machine. You plug this little guy right here. Don't force it. If it's not going in easily, you're probably not doing it right. And you don't want to break it. Uh, you'll plug this into your computer. You'll save this uh, SG3 card right onto the SD card reader, which when you plug it in, if you get a computer, you're going to find it. It'll eventually show up under here. Just save the file into there, bring it into the back, plug it in the machine, and you'll be able to run it, and I can help you with that point. Good luck.